This is a cataclysmic event for the residents of the woods, but while its denizens flee the forest from the life engulfing flames, these thrill-seeking beetles actively seek the heat and get really horny. These are buprested beetles within the genus Melanophila, which directly means dark lover because they love black burnt trees, but they're aptly and better known as the fire or fire chaser beetles. Although they might not look like it because they're pitch black elytra specifically adapted to camouflage with burnt wood, they're a very unique type of borer beetle. They can be found in many aftermaths of forest fires, copulating in the bearably hot wood before laying eggs under the bark. It's a fascinating niche, and it comes with a couple of advantages. First, the fiery destruction gives the beetle an empty tree that's free of competition that their larva can inhabit. Second, the tree is dead so it won't fight back against the invading larvae. Third, it's an all-you-can-eat barbecue for these hungry insects. And fourth, the smoke and fire itself is a huge deterrent to predators so the beetles can safely mate. Although one predator, the black-backed woodpecker, remarkably takes advantage of this spicy buffet. Now, forest fires aren't an everyday occurrence so a big question scientists had was how did these beetles know when and where one was even happening? Research into this insect began in the 1960s when William G. Evans of the University of Alberta ruled out the possibility of these beetles using smell or any olfactory receptors. The beetle didn't react at all when it was gassed with smoke from various trees and in 1980, hearing was also ruled out. Evans performed some experiments and on one faithful day, he tried exposing the insects to infrared radiation and their antenna bricked up and twitched. He knew he was on the right track. So, Evans aimed the infrared beam to different parts of the body to locate a possible sensor. This led to the discovery of Melanophila having a unique infrared sensitive organ on the beetle's thorax near the middle legs that can become completely exposed during flight. Evans also found that this beetle responds to infrared wavelengths ranging from 2.5 to 4.0 micrometers, which coincides with the emissions of burning trees. Of course, sensing the infrared radiation depends on the size and intensity of the blaze as well as its surrounding terrain, but that's why the sensory organ fully opens up during flight. Because of where the organ is located, the beetles can only sense radiation from below and from the side. The organ doesn't come with a lens nor does it have an opening that can function as one, so the beetles can't differentiate between sources of radiation. However, it's speculated that the beetle can perceive the intensity of the signal on both sides, so it's likely that the beetle follows the infrared like how a bloodhound follows an odor trail. There's a range of speculated distances that these beetles can detect, but a study from Schmitz and Busick investigated a case in Coalinga, California in 1924 and the beetles that aggregate there was suspected to come from a forest 25 and 130 kilometers away. But this wasn't any normal forest fire. It was a lightning strike on an oil storage rig and thousands of barrels went up in flames. Reports say there was an untold amount of beetles and without any trees to mate on, they must have been very confused. But yes, since these beetles only follow infrared trails, sometimes they won't lead to a forest fire. Any type of fire will attract these beetles, so reports have observed these beetles at sugar refineries, smelters, concrete plants, and huge barbecues. In fact, in the 1940s, visitors watching football games at the Berkeley's Memorial Stadium were often the victim of these voracious beetles, as the crowd smoked so much that it attracted them. And by victim, I mean these beetles bite, and they Hard. Although firefighters have bigger concerns quelling the flames of accidents or arson, these beetles are a huge hindrance to their job. With the dangerous combination of hungry and horny, any vertical surface like a human can be confused as trees to land on, clamp down, and get ready for the deed. They've been christened the colorful name of stump fuckers by the firefighters of California. I'm getting a little off topic, so let's return back to that study I mentioned earlier because I think I understated how impressive this detection range really is. As a disclaimer, it is still uncertain how sensitive these organs are since there is a huge range of possibilities. But at such a huge distance, these infrared signals can easily be distorted by thermal noise or random fluctuations of heat near the beetle. 
And despite that, the beetle can still detect it, which suggests that these beetles can utilize a phenomenon called stochastic resonance. It's a phenomenon that describes an oscillating signal, such as maybe how a fire flickers. And that oscillating signal can actually stand out more if the random noise around it increases, and it has been observed in other animals, such as species of crickets, using it to observe changes in air pressure to detect oncoming aerial predators. Although it's just a hypothesis in the Melanophila beetles, there's a lot of evidence to reasonably suggest this possibility as it fits within its estimated range of the combustion of Koalinga. With how amazingly sensitive this Pyrophilus beetle's organs are, it easily outclasses infrared detectors available in the market and competes with radio telescopes used in astronomy. The capabilities of these beetles also caught the attention of the US Air Force as its theoretical sensitivity is better than even the currently available microbolometers. Although general research on this topic has slowed down, the same researcher of this Koalinga study is attempting to engineer a sensor based on the organs of this beetle. If successful, such a powerfully sensitive sensor can help improve and quicken responses to fires before they become out of hand. Thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider liking, subscribing, and if we're feeling a little spicy, commenting on this video. And if you're as interested in insects as the US military is, maybe check out this video about cyborg beetles and how they might be used as micro air vehicles. Anyway, again, thank you so much and have a good rest. Oh, Jesus. Stump fucker. Sorry. Again, have a good day.